and we're on. Yep. And today's guest, we've got Alan Bryant. How are you, Alan? Uh, I'm all right, yeah. First of all, mate, thanks for coming on, uh, telling your story. It's a heartbreaking story. Your son, Alan, went missing six years ago, yep. never been found. You're still trying to get answers. This is one of the reasons why you're here today, to tell your story and to see who's watching. To try and basically get, no get closure, but you want answers. It's been not but heartbreak for the last six years. Problems with the police, problems with other people. So... I know we'll go back to the start, Alan, but we'll go right back to when. How was Alan's upbringing? Um, just a normal, normal lad. Eh? We brought him up as make him worried about what was happening around about him. Eh, he was he was spoiled with his mum. You know what I mean? His mum always spoiled spoiled him at Christmas time, during birthdays, and and things like that. And he's just a normal lad, and he, his friends had a good group of friends. And that he was brought up with who he went to nursery with, who he stick all the way through uh, primary school and high school, um, who who they all stuck together, you know what I mean? It's just like, he was just a normal lad brought up in a, a normal housing scheme. Um, he was brilliant with his two sisters, and he loved Amy and Sobe so much. I mean, they couldn't ask for a better big brother. Mm -hmm. So, six years ago, just over six years ago, before Alan went to the nightclub, is it Sticks? Yep. In Glen Rothes. Did you see him before he went to the nightclub? What basically happened uh, that Saturday, um, Alan had a few friends in the house and uh, heard the music going on, obviously having a drink upstairs. Um, there was no plans for him to actually go out. Um, cause this is quite normal in my house because I prepared my son and his friends to be in my house and that and that. And, you know what I mean? Somebody else's house or Somebody out in the streets. That way I knew where, where they were and mm -hmm. I knew they were safe and things like that. Um, it was just out of the blue. One of his friends says, you want, want to come to this engagement party? I want you invited because one of his friends were getting uh, engaged. And uh, he was in such a happy mood. I mean, brilliant mood. He asked me for a few quid, for a few pints. And, uh, and that was that. And uh, he just said, I'm away. I wait at the new, like I wait at the engagement party and we're all laughing and joking. And and that's when I left the house around half past eight. Um on the Saturday, uh, the second November to to go to this engagement party. And that was the last you ever seen him? That's the last I ever seen my son. It's heartbreaking. So when did you get the phone call that or when did you start getting the panic alarm that he was missing or something was wrong? Well, Sunday came, obviously Alan was out and that and um Sometimes he, he, he'd come home early in the morning, waking us up, you know what I mean, during, mm -hmm. or shut up at the windy. Mm -hmm. Like, he'd, he'd just he'd wake us up during the night, whatever. Um, or sometimes he'd stay out or crash out with yeah. our mates. Young and, boy, 24. Uh, I've used to go two or three, four days at a time. Uh, he was 23. Yeah. Um, um, he would just, um, let's say, crash out our mates, and they might end up on the rattle again the next day, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, just don't know, but it was like, obviously, the more sun he went or on and you're sitting going that's not like I'm not to be him you know what I mean because every time Alan's out you always text even though he didn't have a phone that night which I'll try to cl clarify with everyone you'd always ask a friend for a shot of his phone because he was just going a couple of weeks before be beforehand he'd borrow one of his friends home it's not a text you know what I mean dad I'm here I'm alright you know what I mean like you need to worry in that um, it's just the more Sunday went on I started to worry and this is when we started like Asking people and phoning people when Mary was going around doors to see we've seen Alan and things like that. You, and we were sitting there going, we just felt as though something's wrong, you know what I mean? So we left it uh, to Monday. Um, and that was uh, the, 4th of November, the 4th of November. And by that time, sorry, by, by that time uh, we started to get really concerned because he's never been away that long without hearing, hearing from him. And, and that, and then, on Monday, we just knew something happened to him. Because it was totally unlike him to be away that long without letting us know. Mm -hmm. Did you have that gut feeling that there's something not right here? Both of his did, me and his mum. Mm -hmm. There was something wrong. So what steps did you take then, Alan? Um, well, the day went, as the day progressed, um, Mary and, and, uh, and I'm phoning about and that, obviously still trying to find out and everybody's, uh, talking about Alan and things like this and uh, um, just trying to find out where he was, who's seen him, who who he left the nightclub with. Um, and, it, 
his afternoon got on, was the report we'd have missed him at uh, uh, 4 uh, 40 pm uh, to the, the police uh, gone off with CID. Did Alan have any enemies or any grievances on the build up to it? Or? Yeah, he did. Um, one, he actually smashed a window accidentally four weeks prior. Uh, some some heavy mob who actually own shops um, and into drugs and all that. Um, what basically happened is uh, we got a phone call, Alan and his pal were pretty drunk up near the shops. and So it, it was nothing major, you know what I mean? It wasn't, they weren't the cause of me, him or anything like that. Uh, so Manny went up, his mum went up, and uh, I was just seen Alan's pal standing outside the, the, the shop. And uh, as Alan went in the shop, Alan and Alan in the shop, there was nothing happening, you know what I mean? It was, it was totally quiet. Uh, two plain clothes uh, CID officers appeared to be nowhere. And the next minute, the next minute, um, Alan's mum seen him was um, grabbing Alan from the back. They didn't identify themselves. So my son doesn't know who's, who, who the hell is this. Who the hell is this? You know, I'm grabbing him. And uh, so what he done was lashed out with his feet and he smashed a bolt in the window. Eh? And uh, as, as a result of that, um, um, the shop owners actually said um, uh, to Alan's cousin, um, tell your cousin he's getting it. Mm -hmm. Do you think that had anything to do with the disappearance? It's one of the theories that, like, yeah, they, they could be involved. Because yeah. we were speaking earlier and you said that the last two people to speak to Alan were two police officers. Yep. Do you think that's got anything to do with it also? I think the police know exactly what's happened to my son. And uh, I've been in my son's investigation. I do believe the police have, uh, they've not just made the mistakes, they've intentionally made the mistakes. And uh, the garden collected CCTV footage. I believe uh, certain CID officers were on the take. Uh, uh, it's well known in Glen Office, you know what I mean? Uh, going to certain restaurants, getting free meals, turning up the back of uh, shops like, and getting free drink, uh, for engagement parties, for birthday parties, wedding parties, uh, for anything, you know what I mean? They're getting free drink. I mean, everybody else goes to Asda's. I mean, nobody goes to a con convenience store um, to actually get free, to get alcohol, if you know what I mean? Like, especially when you're having a party. Because I wouldn't, I mean, I'd go to Asda's or Tesco's, and, but apparently it was a different matter for Glen Office Society. Mm -hmm. So, from that night then, what CCTV footage, was there any evidence or was there any, anything to say where Alan could have went when he left the nightclub? No, the, the very f first thing when the CID actually came out on the Monday was uh, Alan's mum, Mary, just, um, she was going, click to get the footage, get the footage from the sticks, click to the CCTV footage, get, get, get the CCTV footage, and we're always on about the police about this. And uh, I mean, there's absolutely quite a lot of cameras involved uh, outside St Sticks Night Club. There's a chip shop with it, uh, with CCTV, and there's a uh, a boxing uh, this guy who supplies bouncers and uh, uh, he owns a boxing club. He's got 15 cameras outside his um, outside his gymnasium. He actually does the security at CCTV with the bouncers and also runs the CC CCTV footage. Um, but the police failed to collect any of I mean, it. The only footage the police ever did get was Alan leaving the, the nightclub um, in the foyer, walking out, and one camera seeing him walking away. Um, but that, that that CCTV footage is like totally flawed. It's lies. You know what I mean? I, every time I share it, I go to myself, when am I sharing, for the, sharing this for? Because that's not the truth. Because I've actually seen nearly 40 minutes of CC, uh, all, all the footage with Alan inside the foyer, the foyer and Alan outside. And when I seen Alan walk away, he turned left mm. behind, the, behind the nightclub. So what the police are saying is like, he headed homewards, but that's not true. Uh, Alan headed left and the only way for him to come back around again to, for the police to actually talk to him, sitting on that wall, he must have went around behind the, the nightclub. Alan was still present. And the reason I know this is uh, one of Alan's friends actually said to him, Alan, do you want to lift in a taxi? And uh, Alan says, no, it's all right, I'm going somewhere. And his, his mate gave him a cigarette. And so and his mate says, aye, he was just sitting in the wallway talking to two police officers. But um, for some reason, there's another camera which should, which should actually prove that, which is pointing towards the wall. You know what I mean? Like, and uh, the police have refused to actually let me see that. Mm -hmm. I've tried many times to ask them. And it's not the only camera. 
I don't know whether they've collected it, they're, I've collected it or not, or just saying they have collected it. Uh, I don't know why they're refusing to actually let me see it. Uh, they're actually saying like uh, the lights interfering with it, but the lights, the, the camera's put in a position with the lights behind it, you know. It can see everything. And um, if I knew my son, if, if my son headed home, uh, he would have been caught back in that camera, the one he was actually captured in. At uh, no point, I mean, uh, 40 odd minutes, uh, just shortly 40 minutes, uh, no point did my son appear back in that footage again. The last two people to see, the uh, last two people to talk to my son were two police officers. What do you think happened that night, Alan, to your son? Oh, well, there was another disturbance um, behind Sticks Night Club, which the police completely ignored. Um, there was one earlier on, which you know about, which happened at the back of one. Um, it, it's just quite hard. I'm, I'm going, look, it's a nightclub. You, you, you do know, like, there could be one or two, three disturbances uh, at a nightclub. And, uh, and these people staying the dwellings across from the, the nightclub, two, two independent witnesses came forward. One says, at uh, 2.15, they heard somebody screaming and lassies screaming and hysterics and things like that. And another witness at 2.20 says, I got, woke, I got woken up with um, people screaming and hysterics. And uh, it, was like, it was just like, it sounded like something really bad was happening. But the police never followed that up. And the security company never t uh, never checked their cameras. And uh, and there was actually there was actually council cameras behind the the car park as well and um, the police failed to collect that and basically what they told me was uh, up when I put the complaint in was uh, the council camera stopped working that night the only night that stopped working yeah. was the night Alan disappeared the night Alan disappeared yeah because you've made a few complaints against the police yeah what kind of a complaints did you make the, it was fine the very first thing was obviously I seen Alan CCTV footage on leaving the nightclub he was drunk I mean like He's went out. It's not a problem. He's drunk. I'm not interested if he's drunk or not. All I want is that footage released as soon as possible. And and this is what I kept on fighting for from day one when Alan's mum was going, get that footage, get that footage, get that footage. And the police keep on saying to me, um, or oh, the technical department in Glasgow's working on this. You know what I mean? It takes time, data protection, you blur out people's images and all that. And I'm sitting, as time goes on, a few weeks goes on. I'm going, get that footage out. You've had plenty of time to sort that out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Get it out there. Get it out there. You know what I mean? Get, get my sons. It's, it's the most important thing of all. Get that footage out there because it's all you've got. It's all you've got. And uh, and they keep them coming up with the same excuses constantly. And uh, I'm going, well, you're lying to me because I know guys that could do that. You know what I mean? I know guys, they're no experts in computers, but they could do that. You know what I mean? 30 seconds of footage, you know what I mean? Uh, for some reason. Uh, they didn't want to release my, my son's uh, CCTV footage and um, leaving that nightclub. Uh, when they did eventually re release it, it was uh, down, to, down to a petition and uh, it was down to pressure uh, from the local press and, and things like that. And they actually released it on the 6th of June 2014 and uh, that's well over seven months after my son went missing. And if you're out in a night out, I mean, seven months, if you're, young, if you're a young person, I mean, you're not going to remember that night because you're going to have other nights out, you know what I mean? So it was vital. It was really vital when that footage was released as soon as possible. It's an outcome of the complaint. Uh, we have to go through the, the Police Professional Standards Department to actually get to park. Uh, they actually agreed it would be beneficial. It would have been beneficial for the police to actually release the CCTV footage as soon as they can. So how have the police been treating you six years later? And that six years, how have they been with you? It's everything they say to the press is, is just a constant lie. They say they're constantly in touch with the Brighton family with updates and things like that. Lucky to hear from a couple of times a year. Um, I've actually got to do something drastic, walk into a polo station or, uh, with, with a poster. I, I mean, I'll, I'll put a video up on social media, you know what I mean, just to get their attention. And then they'll contact me, you know what I mean, just... It's just keeping pressure on them. I mean, no, the, the police, every time they talk to the press, it's just the same thing. This is the biggest investigation ever in five. Uh, we are in regular contact with the family with updates. Um, it's like they're making it like they, they, they're actually in touch with us 
like all the time, who's mm -hmm. not, you know what I mean? Like, as I said, I've got to do something, you know what I mean? Do you think that they should be doing more then? They should have done everything and more. It's not, not, not just more. They should have collected all that CC, CCTV footage. Mm -hmm. I mean, everywhere from the schools, there's so much yet. I mean, on the way home, they're the climbing shops, and it just, you're sitting going, why did they, why did they not do that? I mean, I, I watched other, I, I, one of the things you, you know, it's like you start following other cases and that, and you see the post in doing other cases, you know what I mean? Like, releasing the footage and that, and going, why is my son so different? I mean, what do you think it is? Why do you think they've not, if you think they're making mistakes and not following up stuff, what do you think that's making that happen? Do you think that there's an involvement there with them, or is that maybe just being lazy, or? What do you think the, the reason I don't is? think it's anything to be lazy. I think it was just doing negligence. And, uh, um, and I don't want to say the police are guilty of anything, but they would have acted uh, ever since Alan went missing. It sort of makes them self look guilty because they're not telling the public the truth. Um, because the first week when Alan actually went missing, they actually promised an incident, an incident van to be outside uh, Sticks, Night, Sticks Night Club on the Friday the 8th of November 2013 and uh, and the 9th of November on the Saturday 2013. So I, I sat there and, like, obviously, I was sitting there with a few Alan's friends on the Saturday, had a had a few drinks and that, because and I didn't know why I got to see the incident van. Like, I said, oh, I'm going to go and see this, you know what I mean? So I decided to go up with uh, Alan's cousin, two of his friends, uh, went up and there was no incident van there. And I'm going, what, what, what the fuck's happening? I mean, I mean I've, this has been promised, you know what I mean? This, my family's been promised there's going to be an incident van outside that nightclub. What's going on? You know what I mean? Like, So I actually had to phone 101. Uh, when I actually phoned 101, two police cars actually turned up. Um, and they turn up, I'm, I'm going mad at this time, like, I've had a few drinks and I'm kicking the fence um, and I'm swearing at the post, but the fuck's the incident, man, you know what I mean? Like, what, what was going on here? Because the headquarters is actually in Clonopus Pipe headquarters, and the police headquarters, and they've got more than one incident, man. And they, they actually turned up and what they started to do was actually hand out posters and that. Um, but um, half an hour after I left, uh, I got a phone call and said the police left as well. So, on the night when the last Alan was seen, for a body just to disappear or someone just to go missing, was there no traces of DNA? Was there any like sniffer dogs or anything like that out there to mm. try and track it down or try and track a scent down? Or no. No forensics? Nothing. Because um, it's quite strange how you actually mention that because one of Alan's friends, at the engagement party, Alan left his jacket there. And obviously, he's, got, he's after seeing one that night. He left it up in Leslie at the engagement party, so he only had his T-shirt on outside the Sticks Night Club. And uh, we got his jacket handed in the next day and the police were never interested in contacting, uh, collecting that jacket or using the sniffer dogs. When you're watching the footage of The Last Steps, Alan, how's your, what are you thinking then? When you're watching that footage, uh, the last time you've seen Alan, what's going through your mind? It's, uh, it's, just, it's just horror, eh? You know what I mean? Because I could see some of Alan's friends still in that footage. You know what I mean? It's just, and some of their friends actually headed to a party later on that night. Um, people seem to think I'm blaming all Alan's friends for Alan, my son's disappearance, but it's not true. I mean, I'm, I know where most of my son's friends were. Uh, I'm more interested in the ones who actually headed to that party that night. And just to watch that, I mean, each time I share it, I just feel. I'm not telling the truth in the police, I'm not telling the truth. You know what I mean? Like, because I know Alan was still there, and I, and I know for a fact that even if he's sitting in a wall for 30 odd minutes, just have a fag to talk to the police, if you know what I mean. He's going to head off, um, head off somewhere, um, because it's cold, he only had his t shirt on. But um, with the time limit, the way things worked after the, watching all that footage, uh, there was a major disturbance uh, in Barton Place, and people running about screaming and shouting and and, and lasses like hysterical screaming and and that's where the party was and uh, and we've heard so many rumours Alan actually went there and and that's what's, what's that's what's happened to him 
and that party going off this and which is only it's about a fifteen minute walk from sticks, you know what I mean? So even the time frame works out we are and still being present at sticks, you know what I mean? Because I left it the CC's CC's TV actually shows Alan leaving at two or two AM two two or two AM. So if he did hang about for a little while and uh, everything kicked off around Barton Place and Clonroff is like a quarter to three in the morning, it just makes sort of sense like that's what he probably went because well, at the party which is so strange it was because these people these friends were they always posting social media um, parties and pictures and that nobody's phones were working that night nobody seen that on that night um, it's just like they were telling the police one of them broke their phone when the last he said they broke they, they broke their phone that's why she never posted any pictures the other one said she was spiked um, some drug at Sticks Night Club, even though she was on social media, uh, on Twitter and all that, which I've got proof of sent out to the police and all that. Um, just the way their, their actions and everything, after the element missing, the guy at the party actually closed his Facebook down on that Sunday. The element missing, you know what I mean? That was him. He stopped having parties ever again. Um, and I, I, I've got messages proving that Alan was in the vicinity, uh, two people talking to each other who was in. I mean, Alan was in that street. Um, everything points to the, the, these same people. And, and what what even gets uh, even stranger was um, when Alan, one of Alan's friends, well, actually one of one of our friends actually got a TMR. I don't know if you know what that is. It's a tenants no. meeting room. Each game in Glenrothes has one. So we've got the tenants meeting room, uh, which was in Macedonia and um, One one of our friends arranged this. Uh, so it was like sort of base for searches and things like for Alan. One of his friends at that party walked in uh, just a week later and says, you're never going to find him. He was at the party, you know what I mean? And the strangest thing, uh, uh, strangest thing is like everybody seemed to have left at five o'clock. And uh, this, so this guy's here alone with his lassie. And what does he decide today? You know, he decides to go away and get a pickup truck. You know what I mean? Like, that's, that's the last thing any guy would do, you know what I mean? He's, he's left with a bird, you know what I mean? Uh, drunk, whatever, you know what I mean? Just... She, and the, well, people are saying like yeah, he's actually took Alan away and uh, dumped Alan uh, a landfill site which his dad which his dad actually owns. Um, it just I've been say, I've been points that way. I mean, so what's the rumours then? What actually happened for the body that disappears? Because you were saying earlier that people were saying online that. It's, it's disturbing to say, but he was chopped up and fed to pigs. Yeah, but uh, I heard that quite a few times, and uh, and um, you don't know what you believe. Eh? It's mm -hmm. just the fact. I mean, this is where the nightmares and things like that come into place, and you're heading that. I mean, because all, all the rumours like you're heading that, and uh, that's probably the most disturbing one mm -hmm. uh, of all. Have you been getting trolled or anything? Because I've had a lot of people on who <laughs> who have got social media to get try and get answers for certain other circumstances and other like, horror stories and stuff like that but they've been getting trolled from people saying nasty things people out who have lost kids people who have done other things and they've been getting trolled from people have you received a lot of that yeah but like there was one one special one I mean, special one I call him a complete fucking tool um, uh, John McEnroy uh, he actually said he kidnapped my son and uh, tortured him and ran 240,000 volts through his body and killed him. Um, he, he actually, I think he got an eight month prison sentence for that. Then he told my family again. Um, and then he actually got another eight months prison sentence for that. And he got another three months prison, uh, prison sentence on top of that, which is to run concurrent uh, for setting fires regarding an, an, an old woman who was threatening an old woman and that uh, for fire reason and uh, for some reason the justice system let him out a month later <laughs> I mean like I'm going like I mean this guy's got a day a month you know what I mean like especially well six months or something like and, but he's out and they let him out a month later and what he does is uh, he, he goes down to England and uh, he trolls somebody else and um, he ends up in jail again he gets out of jail and troll somebody else and, and he gets another light sentence. You know what I mean? He's just like he's threatening to rape someone and uh, it's a pedophile, a pedophile hunter group. Um, I, I was actually talking to a guy, Craig, and uh, and 
i bistre i sagde, det er, det er, der går det, um, it's going to rape his daughter, you know what I mean, so, this is, he actually got charged with a kick, you know what I mean, because um, he punched him, you know what I mean, because I, I, I could have been there that day, because I was basically invited, you know what I mean, because I would have done me and punched him, eh? um, but the most serious one was, uh, it turned out to be a 15 year old boy, he was, they were sending, he was sending pictures with uh, knives, and um, saying he's going to stab me, you fat know, bastard, uh, how does it know I know where your son is? Uh, how do you how, how do you feel that I know that he's fucking assholes while you're hoping? Um, I'm going to get you, fat man. I know where you stay. You know what I mean? They started naming the street and that, and then I don't stay in that street. Cause a Bryant. I mean, but I did I did know who uh, it was. Monk Waffer, who who actually stayed himself. You know what I mean? So he's he's done his homework. You know what I mean? This young lad, but we didn't know he was a young lad at the time. He could have been anyone. 20, 30, 40, 50, you know These what I mean? fake profiles? Uh, fake profiles, there were so many of them. So he kept on like repeating them. And um, one, of the one of my family members like, stupidly replied to him, you know what I mean? And what that does is that opens up all my family, you know what I mean? So, Feels it. Yeah. And uh, but the police were so concerned about this. And they had the police, the police had a car outside my front of my house, at the back of my house. And it was like, just, um, I, I wouldn't say I was living in fear, like, it was just, I wouldn't. Mean, so your sons went missing, but yet you're living in fear, people are making threats to yeah, watch you. Yeah, yeah, I, well, no, no, is that living in fear, so. I know what you're saying, but I, it's in your conscience mind that I, you don't know who the fuck's sitting behind that computer, yeah, but exactly. they're all dafties, and yeah. it's easy to say, but they're all cowards, man. I, 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 that's you know what I mean. I, I, I mean, they're just out there to and make people, things. people, if it's young boys, it, it, as sick as it is, it might be for a laugh, but if, and try to, Say bad things, but nah, there's was, some sick cunts out there. He, he was the, he, he was beyond sick, you know what I mean? Like the things he was saying, like, you know what I mean? Alan's here, Alan's in the water, not that, you know what I mean? Fuck, you know what I mean? Fuck him, he's a me prick and whatever, you know what I mean? Just everything, everything he could possibly say, he, he did, he did, obviously, it did get to me, you know what I mean? It got to all my family, you know what I mean? Uh, as a result, I put CCTV in my house and that, you know what I mean? It just, uh, because I, I'm out there searching answers to what's happened to my son, and um, and what's happening is you get these people coming along, just make it so harder for you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But they're never going to stop me. You know what I mean? Like I mean, nothing's going to stop me uh, um, searching for my, uh, for my son Alan. I mean, yeah, it was six years on, and you're still fighting. You're still fighting to get answers to try and because you've got another, you've got other kids. Yeah, and I know Alan was just turned thirty last month. Yes. Um, how were you then when it obviously turned 30? How were you, how were you in the family then? Uh, that, that this year has been exceptionally hard. I mean, especially when you re reach an age of 30. I mean, that's a milestone in your life, you know what I mean? It's like 25, 30 year old. You should be settled down with children by that time. Maybe no children, you might be still out enjoying yourselves. I mean, um, but it's, it's been a really hard one this year. Um, I don't know, it's just... Each year it gets harder, and the thing is, you can't move on with your life. You know what I mean? You're sitting in here going, and people go up, uh, maybe 10 goes by, you know what I mean? Things get easier and easier, but it never does, you know what I mean? Things get harder each day it goes on, you know what I mean? And you just go, because all you want is answers. And I look at Alan's mum, and, and I watch her cry sometimes, and I can't, even if I get a hug, it doesn't take the pain of me, you know what I mean? And it's, 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 oh, fuck, it, fuck, it's horrendous to watch, you know what I mean, just, mm -hmm. and my daughter, Amy, she's actually doing counselling and all that as well, uh, she can go, try to be, a, go to be a counsellor, uh, she's working, and um, I'm really, really proud of her, um, but sometimes she has a bad day, and she'll phone me up, uh, crying on the phone and all that, and, uh, and I'll go, look, you'll be all right, and we drink a lot of that, and you'll be all right, you know what I mean? Just, just relax, so I'll, I'll pass, you know? You're just feeling a little bit down in there, because, because he doesn't want to phone a mum, because he doesn't want to upset a mum, you know what I mean? And uh, so, but it's funny, like, we do, sit, we do things separately, but as a family, we're still a unit, you know what I mean? We're stronger than we ever yeah. have been. Um, it's just... I love my kids, you know, and, uh, and I'm sitting there and I'm missing them growing up um, because I'm fighting for justice for my boy. Mm -hmm. And how can, for anybody watching, Alan, 
what would you say to them? You know, it's maybe got some information or maybe too scared to come forward or too, because like, people are, are scared to make a move if they know information. Yeah. Um, but but what, what would you say to them if anybody ever did know anything or watched this that could maybe help you try and move on? And I just want them to think if it was one of their family members, if it was their son or their daughter. Could you imagine living like that for over six years? No, no, no. You, you, no, no, where your son or daughter is. Uh, no, the worst has actually happened to them. And uh, you've got no closure. You can't move on with your life. Every day is a fight to get out of bed. I mean, the sleepless nights. Um, watching your family suffer around about you. Can you imagine that pain? I mean, and if you do know anything, just come forward to the police and... There's so many ways to do it through missing people eh, anonymously, 0800, I mean, no 100 number. Eh. It's, there's so many ways to actually end this. What's your Facebook pages and stuff, Alan? Um, my, my son's actually got a Facebook page. Um, it's uh, called Justice for Alan Bryant Jr. It's got 68,000 members on it. And um, the, the, members, the members on my son's page, um, they're constantly giving my family support and all that. And... Um, yeah. they're always I mean they're always that, that's what keeps me going you know what I mean Known, you've like, got support you've, you've got, got support. more support than haters Alan and yeah. does it matter no. what you do in life these no. bastards have always hate so I've learned that um, <laughs> I've learned that with trolls um, um, yeah fuck the cowards nah, man nah, that's, that's what they are I mean you get a few bad comments on the page I mean don't yeah. take it personally Yeah. I mean it's, it's simple just block them move them out I mean I've actually met a few well known stars not who've actually been trolled as well, you know what I mean? Everybody gets them. You know I mean? Everybody. Aye. Aye, it's just no matter how grim the story, no matter how happy the story you mean nothing to they're me. there. They're not happy with their own life. And they're other shite bags. Aye. And I'll say it and I'll anybody would face them or, but they they just hide behind their screen and type away, sitting in their, their pants, just they just low life. Just hating life. Aye, yeah, just scum. laugh at them pricks. That's I call them like I don't know, it's coming to society, you know what I mean? Like, low, low life, pun life, pun life. But you, you're always going to get them, you know? Yeah. Um, but as I say, it's like, just like, you'll get certain ones that will come along, well, mm -hmm. upset the, the apple cart, as you say, like, but um, but the one liners, not. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't yeah. even bother about them, they don't get to me, you know? You, as sad as it is, but you do get used to them. You do get used to them. You know what I mean? So six years on, Alan, and your son's never been found. Do you ever feel some days that he might walk through the door? Never. Nah. No. So in your mind, look, mate, it's such a horrible question, but do you believe Alan was murdered that night? I believe Alan was murdered that night shortly after he left that nightclub. Yeah. Yeah. Without a doubt. And uh, I, I mean, we've dis disputed uh, over 80,000 uh, posters. Um, we were actually took an ST, STV advert out, uh, um, which cost over three thousand five hundred pound. The amount of, the amount of coverage my, Alan's, uh, my son Alan's I actually got in the, the local press, which is important because it keeps the members of the local, you know what I mean, like the local community aware about Alan, and aware that Alan's still missing. Um, my son is never going to come walk in this door. He's never going to. We're never going to see him again. All we want to do is actually find them, and uh, the, this has been the major tabloids coming to uh, effect when they have, when they actually publish things about Alan. I do believe that's when they get pressure. The police actually get pressured, and, uh, and to keep pressure on the police, you know what I mean, to, to keep them looking for them, for Alan, is 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 always going to be my focus. My son's never going to walk through that door again. My son was murdered that night, and people in this town know it, certain people in this town know it, and they're too scared to come forward for some reason. Um, but as I say, like, if they were in our shoes, I mean, you know, have my, what, have, what my family are dealing with, they, they would have given a pause. They would have talked to the boss a long time ago. So you're just trying to keep creating noise. You tend to see when you're creating more noise about your son, the polos start helping more. Yeah. As much as listeners always going to be bad coppers but they're always going to be good as well yeah. if you came across people that are willing to help you and, and put their neck in the line and, and push things to the boundaries <laughs> uh, well 
everybody's like, see, it's funny that you talk about my son's page, and I was talking about my son's page there, and there's quite a lot of people on my son's page who have been in trouble with the police and that before and that, like, you know. So it's an open minefield. Mm -hmm. Fuck that cop as a bastard, Bob. <laughs> because, I mean, just because they've actually been in trouble with the police, I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, you kind of hold that against the police. I mean, you've done something like you've been yeah, done that, yeah. you know. And uh, no, I came across and the the, the police on the beat and that. Uh, each time I've met them, they've been brilliant. I mean, really supportive and that. They've really had nothing to do with my son's investigation. It's the gun officer ID and the major investigation team. Uh, I've not, I've never had anything against the local Bobby. Uh, as I say, like, I've talked to them. They come up and, uh, and some of them say things like I can't repeat. You know what mm. I mean? Because like they believe things was happening to my son Alan as well, um, but nah, the local police have been been good. Like because it, it's it's only natural that you're angry towards everybody yeah. and anybody towards the case. So for you, moving yourself on, Alan, is it just non-stop for you? Then just every day is focusing on trying to get some answers for yourself, so you can eventually move on with your life. If I find out what Alan is, what's happened to him. That's the deal about me one in my life because Alan, Alan's took up my life and I mean I get praise for things like oh you've done brilliant you're proud of yourself and things like that and I don't take praise well you know what I mean like it's why I don't take take well at all because I've not found my son I've I've still feel my son you know what I mean I mean it doesn't matter you can't feel like that mate I know it's, it's easy to I say but you can't feel like that no, I, I mean I've not found him ever I mean you start to go. You've done brilliant, keeping in the public eye, and uh, it doesn't mean anything to me. Mm. I've not found no other. Hopefully one day, mate, you get your answers, and because we spoke earlier, and that's what you're wanting. You're wanting a grave or somewhere you can visit, and it's breaking you that you can't do that. I don't care if anybody gets prosecuted. If I get my boy him, mm -hmm. then, then I've got mum. You know what I mean? Like, then I could move on in my life. And uh, my family can move on in my life. And uh, how do I see my, my Alan's mum suffer like this every day? And why I go on holiday with my family? I mean, mm. I've been away two days in six, over six years, you know what I mean? And that was actually a gift from a friend, which, is, which, which wasn't far away in the... He's my boy, he's my firstborn child. And you don't give up me, I can tell. My son would be in jail if it was me, you know what I mean? So I'm not going to stop. Uh -huh. Rightly so, mate. So we'll leave all your links to Alan's Facebook page. Is there any numbers you want us to leave or anything, Alan? Well, we put email addresses as well. Well, there is an email address, I think it's Operation Toner. Uh -huh. you, you'll probably find that on my son's uh, page and... Uh, it's just a normal number, eh? They're like crime stoppers and they uh, missing people. You know what I mean? Like one one six zero 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 zero. Yeah. There, I mean, there's so many ways people when actually in contact with the police and and that's what all for. I mean, as much as I've got, as much as I, I know the police have killed my son and I don't trust them one inch. Um, but I've got to keep on pleading for the members support to come forward for information and contact the police. You know what I mean? To to Give them that information, you know what I mean? Yeah. Is there anything you'd like to finish up on, Alan? I just want to thank everyone for over the past six years, you know, just for their continued support and that, you know what I mean? Especially my son's page. Forget about the trolls now, I mean, I mean they've been brilliant, you know what I mean? And uh, so many people have came into my life and they're, help, they're just helping us, you know what I mean? Helping me, like, because I couldn't do it myself. And I've, I've skipped, I've got one's Lynn, one's Janet, and one was Charm, and there's more than that, and there's Diane, and there's so many of them just, just help me, you know what I mean? People move on, but, you know what I mean? But I kind of thank them, everyone, and I feel support. I mean, what they're doing for son Alan and help keep Alan in the public eye. Because to me, that's all it matters, and to keep Alan out there, uh, to keep him out there in the press uh, that way he doesn't get forgotten about and uh, the police don't forget about him and it means the police still need to concentrate and find what's happened to my boy Well Alan, for bringing us into your home and telling us your story and trying to get more awareness to getting some answers for yourself 
I really appreciate it. And um, yes. all I can say is keep grinding it out, mate, and keep, keep working towards trying uh, to get your answers, mate. You. God bless you, brother. And anything I can help with, you know I'm here for you. I appreciate that, James. Uh, no worries, thank you. No, that's not, mate.